Ryzen 9800 X3D is the fastest gaming CPU in 2025, but what's the best graphics card, RAM, motherboard, and other components for your 9800 X3D build? Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. This is our updated Ryzen 9800 X3D gaming PC build 2025 guide. We'll cover everything you need to know for the best Ryzen 9800 X3D PC build in 2025, including the best graphics card for the Ryzen 9800 X3D, the best RAM for the Ryzen 9800 X3D, best motherboard for Ryzen 9800 X3D, and more. And I'll give you two build templates for both a maximum value Ryzen 9800 X3D PC build and a premium Ryzen 9800 X3D gaming PC build. If you get value out of this video, please give it a like, and of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. Let's jump into it. So what's the best graphics card for the Ryzen 9800 X3D in 2025? Well, when building a gaming PC, we wanna get the biggest, fastest graphics card we can afford than just get a CPU that's not gonna bottleneck it. But as we get to the higher end graphics cards, moving up in CPU performance does start to matter for CPU intensive titles or competitive titles like Battlefield 6 or CS2, where lowered settings are used to maximize frame rates and of course, also lowered resolutions. Currently, the Ryzen 9800 X3D is selling for $450 US, and I'll leave retail links in the video description so you can check current pricing and availability in your region. Meanwhile, CPUs like the Ryzen 7800 X3D are selling for around $350, while Ryzen 5 CPUs like the 7600X and 9600X go for between $160 and $180. Those are some pretty big price gaps to jump up to the 9800 X3D, and that's why I recommend a minimum GPU of at least a Radeon RX 9070 or RTX 5070, both selling at over $500 at the time of filming. Otherwise, I would drop down my CPU and use that extra money on my GPU. From there, as we go up in GPU power, the Ryzen 9800 X3D makes even more sense, especially when paired with a GPU like an RX 9070 XT, RTX 5070 Ti, or RTX 5080, and obviously if you've got a 5090, then hands down, I would reach for the 9800 X3D. In our build, we went with the PowerColor Hellhound RX 9070 XT. Let's go over the best RAM for the Ryzen 9800 X3D CPU, which has gotten a lot more complicated as we're now in a consumer RAM shortage due to massive AI data center expansion. And it doesn't seem like this is gonna let up anytime soon. While RAM prices have gone up quite a bit, for someone looking to spend the money for a Ryzen 9800 X3D PC build, the increase, it's not that bad compared to the overall budget. If you need a refresher on RAM speeds and compatibility, check out our best RAM for gaming 2025 video that's linked in the how to build a PC playlist in the description. First, we want a two stick kit, not four sticks as DDR5 memory controllers. They just can't handle four sticks at the speeds that we want and they're gonna be unstable. Second, don't forget that the RAM will run at a slower rated speed until you go into the BIOS and turn on that XMP or Expo one click auto overclocking profile to get the full rated speed. For RAM speed, my top recommendation, DDR5 6000 CL30, possibly CL28 if you have a little bit more to spend. This is the fastest the RAM's gonna typically run with the CPU memory controller in a one-to-one -one mode. That's the most optimal for gaming performance. But these kits, they've become much more expensive in the past month. Some are even selling out. So you might need to look to other speeds like DDR5 5600CL30, DDR5 6000CL36, or DDR5 6400CL32 instead. Now the good news here, in our testing, the Ryzen X3D CPUs, they just don't care very much about RAM speed because they've got so much vCache. The 9800 X3D only loses about one, maybe 2% performance with lesser RAM using an RTX 4090 GPU. So feel free to get RAM that's slower than 6000 speed, slightly faster than 6000 speed, or the higher cast latency if you need to for budget reasons, especially if that helps you jump up to the next GPU tier. So how much RAM do you need? Well, with prices going up now, a two by 16 gigabyte kit, so 32 gigabytes total is all you need. Most DDR5 kits come in a minimum of 32 gigabytes total, though you can occasionally find two by eight gigabyte kits for 16 gigabytes total. There's a handful of AAA titles that will occasionally micro stutter with only 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's not game breaking, but you're building one of the fastest gaming PCs on the planet, so there is really no reason not to get 32 gigabytes unless the cost is really crazy. I definitely not get more than 32 gigabytes given current pricing, unless you know that you're gonna use an application that absolutely needs it, otherwise you're just throwing money away. Looking at the current RAM pricing, here's some good values that I'm seeing, and obviously pricing is really fluid, so check the links in the video description where I'm gonna put the best RAM deals that I can find. For non-RGB kits at DDR5 6000 CL30, I'm seeing them start around $160 in the US, with currently the cheapest being the Patriot Viper Venom kits, with a nice metal finish for about $150. Silicon Power is their X-Power non-RGB 
RGB kits for about $165 in white or black, and you can find kits by Kingston Fury and Clev Bolt for around the same price. For RGB kits at DDR5 6000 CL30, Patriot has their Viper Elite starting around $170, while Silicon Power's ARGB kits start at $175 and kits by Corsair closer to $200. If you don't mind going with less optimal RAM kits, DDR5 6000 CL36 or 6400 CL32 RGB kits currently start around $150. Check the video description for even more options. So what's the best motherboard for the Ryzen 9800X3D? While the Ryzen 9800X3D will work on any AM5 motherboard, we're gonna target motherboards that are best for gamers. Now, ideally, we'd like to get a B650E or B850 motherboard for mid-range to premium builds and consider X870 or X870E for the most premium 9800X3D builds in 2025. We definitely want to skip the A620 and B840 motherboards as those are cut down and they don't allow us the use of AMD's one-click auto overclocking feature called Precision Boost Overdrive, which we definitely want to enable in the BIOS for maximum performance. B650 is being discontinued and only has a PCI Gen 4 GPU slot, while the B650E and B850 motherboards are similarly priced, at least in the US, and they do offer a PCIe Gen 5 GPU slot, so it's essentially a free upgrade. X870 and X870E motherboards typically offer more professional features like more than three M.2 SSDs and increased USB rear panel ports, but we'll have some in the ultra premium section for top end builds. Here's an important note. I do not recommend ASRock motherboards with the Ryzen 9000 series X3D CPUs like 9800X3D due to the higher than normal failure rate with these CPUs. Now while ASRock motherboards, they seem fine for other CPUs, including the 7800X3D, but their history of burning up 9800X3D CPUs in particular should definitely steer you away. ASRock does say that BIOS 3.40 or later will solve the issue, but in my opinion, there's just no reason to risk it, given the excellent offerings from MSI, Gigabyte, and Asus from the mid-range on up. Now you can check out our best Ryzen motherboard 2025 video for our full recommendations. So I'm just gonna give you my top picks for the best motherboard for the Ryzen 9800X3D. We're gonna skip over the more budget motherboard, just spending $450 on the CPU. Let's jump straight into the mid range with boards that have good enough VRMs, basic audio, two or more M.2 NVMe SSD slots, and a decent array of rear USB options. They start around $150, but be aware the premium motherboards aren't that much more, so check out those linked down in the video description before you buy one. For micro ATX size motherboards, we've got the Gigabyte B850M Eagle for around $150. It's a fine board for high-speed USB ports, including a Type-C, for lower-speed USB 2.0 ports, a built-in rear I.O. shield, two M.2 SSD slots, including one with a heat spreader, Wi-Fi 6C, and basic audio. There's also the Gigabyte B850M Gaming X, just nicer styling basically, and a slightly better VRM, it's $10 more. There are also the MSI Pro B850M-P, very similar with the same M.2 and USB configuration, but comes equipped with Wi-Fi 7 instead for about $159, although it has been on sale for as low as $130 this year. For mid-range ATX motherboards, starting around $170 right now, hopefully these go on sale soon, because again, the premium boards aren't that much more. We've got the MSI B850 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi, very similar to the Pro Micro ATX version, except it uses a more gamery styling. And then we've got the Gigabyte B850 Eagle and Gaming X, all for right around $175. They're just full-size ATX versions of those Micro ATX motherboards, with the Gaming X version adding an additional full bandwidth M.2 SSD slot. Moving up to premium motherboards, we're looking for three full bandwidth M.2 SSD slots, with at least two having heat sinks, built-in rear I.O. plates with good USB connectivity, upgraded audio codec to ALC 1200, 1220, or 4080, strong VRMs, and we want it to look amazing. My current top pick is the ASUS TUF B650E Plus with upgraded ALC 1220 audio, three full band with M.2 NVMe SSD slots with covers, decent but not amazing rear USB connectivity, and Wi-Fi 6E. I also think it looks absolutely fantastic for around $180. The B850 version that we used in our build here ups the speed of four USB 2.0 ports. They're all very fast now. And as Wi-Fi 7, sells for about $220. MSI has the B850 Tomahawk, basically similar to the B850 Tough, except it offers three USB type C ports, which is as many as even the best X870E motherboards out there and has more USB connectivity overall. It's got black styling for right around $210. We do have some more expensive boards like the ASUS Strix B850-A and B850-F, 
If they go on sale, they have slightly better features than the Tough. And Gigabyte launched their B850 AORUS motherboards with only basic audio? What are you doing, Gigabyte? Though they did recently announce revision 1.1 of those motherboards, which is gonna upgrade the audio to ALC1220. They just haven't made it into the US market just yet. And the current B850 AORUS Elite sells for around $200 with the basic audio. Moving over to ultra premium motherboards, and you can check out our fall update to our Best Rising Motherboard 2025 video for even more options here. Note that at this price point, there are actually some more cut down X870 and even X870E motherboards that I don't recommend. They're just not as good as some of the premium B850s that I already mentioned. But if you're looking for a postcode readout along with great features, any of the AORUS X870 or X870E motherboards are great. Starting right around $270 with the X870 AORUS Elite or the ICE version for about $10 more where even the cable connections and the postcode readout are white. The X870 and X870E Tomahawk motherboards, they're very similar to the B850 version, honestly, with an additional M.2 and a postcode readout with slight upgrades to the rear USB panel, and they start about $260. Unfortunately, to get a postcode readout on an ASUS motherboard, you're gonna have to spend more than $450 for the Strix X870E-E gaming Wi-Fi. But that board does have incredible rear panel USB connectivity, including four USB type C's. But if you want something cheap, I do like the Tough X870 and X870E motherboards, along with the Strix X870-A in white. There's a ton of other motherboard options out there, including back connector motherboards, all white motherboards, mini ITX motherboards, and more. So check the links in the description and our Best Rising Motherboard 2025 video for more options. So what's the best CPU cooler for the 9800X3D? Well, with its additional thermal headroom, that can help push higher CPU clock speeds, even if we just turn on Precision Boost Overdrive in the BIOS, I think investing just a little bit more in our cooler does make sense. Now that's both to slightly improve performance, but also reduce overall system noise. Now for value focused builds, I recommend any mid-range dual tower air cooler, like the id Cooling A620 Pro SE, the Thermoite Phantom Spirit, the Cooler Master 622 Halo, or similar style dual tower air cooler. If you wanna take the build aesthetics to the next level, just about any, 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler is totally sufficient for the CPU and 360 millimeter coolers are just pretty massive overkill, but we are talking about super high-end builds, so feel free to grab that 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler if that gives you a better aesthetic in your PC build. For more budget models, I like the Thermoy Aqua Elite V3 liquid AIO cooler. We used the 360 millimeter version in one of our 9600X build guides. In our build, we went with maximum performance with the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 ARG GB360 and we went with the pro version, which is the new one. I'll be the first to say this is a total overkill, but it's only $110 or so. And you can, of course, get both these coolers in black and the Arctic in non-RGB version as well. I also really like the id Cooling FX360 Infinity Mirror for about $75, which we've used in previous builds. And the Montec Hyperflow 240 or 360 is a high-performance cooler for just about $75 as well. So what's the best SSD for the Ryzen 9800X3D? If you haven't had a chance to check out our best SSD for gaming 2025 video, I will leave a link to it down in the video description for a deeper dive. Now, the update here to that video is that we are also experiencing an SSD price increase, just like the RAM price increase, due to AI data center demand. There is no gaming benefit, however, from using anything faster than even a SATA SSD, though PCIe Gen 3 and Gen 4 NVMe SSDs, they are now the best price to performance options. I don't recommend a Gen 5 M.2 SSD. They're just twice as expensive as the Gen 4 drives with no consumer benefit, and they also run quite hot Sometimes motherboards even end up sharing lanes with the GPU or other PCIe slots when you socket that Gen 5 M.2 NVMe. Check your motherboard specs if you do plan to get a Gen 5 M.2 SSD. For this build, we used one of my top M.2 NVMe picks with DRAM in the Acer Predator GM7000 2 terabyte drive, which is PCIe Gen 4. Comes with a thermal pad and heat spreader, but we use the heatsink on the motherboard instead. For more budget 9800X 3D builds, I would recommend just grabbing a cheaper Gen 3 or Gen 4 NVMe SSD with a good SLC cache or host memory buffer process like the Western Digital SN5000, Silicon Power UD90, or Team Group G50. For more mid-range to premium builds, looking to add a DRAM cache to make their SSD a little snappier when doing things like file copies and game installs, consider grabbing a drive, starting around $75 right now at least, for one terabyte like the Acer Predator GM7000 we used, 
SK Hynix P41, Clevcraft C930, or Western Digital SN850X. The best price per terabyte is now often four terabyte models followed closely by two terabyte models, and then the one terabyte drives. And this is not 2015 anymore. You do not need a separate drive for your operating system. It's absolutely fine to have a single large capacity drive and that will save you money. I'll leave several SSDs linked down in the video description. But what's the best PC case for a Ryzen 9800X 3D gaming PC build? Now this is a high-end gaming PC. We want it to look amazing and have great airflow. Since we're using a lot of higher-end graphics cards, we also want a case that's gonna fit some of the beefier and longer GPUs as well. For micro ATX, I like the Thermaltake View 170TG with three included ARGB fans and space to top mount up to a 240mm AIO cooler or additional fans and that sells for about $70. But most of you are going to want a full-size ATX case and there's tons of great options out there. A couple of my favorites here, the Montec XR Atrium style case that we've used in the past and it's three included ARGB fans or consider the Okonos Aqua 7 which is very similar and a premium PC case that we've used in the past with six included ARGB fans for about the same price and both come in black and white models. I also really like the Lian Lee V100 with four included ARGB fans, just $79 right now and it also comes in black and white versions. If you want more of a traditional front intake PC case, I really like the Montec XR Wood with four included ARGB fans, it costs right around $80, or you can step up to the Corsair 4000D Frame RS in either non-RGB or ARGB models, right around $100, though you will need to pick up an additional rear exhaust fan. We went with a very premium case in the Antec C5, comes with seven included ARGB fans and an ARGB fan controller, supports up to 360 millimeter AIO coolers, either side or top mounted, and it looks amazing with its dual chamber design for $120. There's also tons of great alternatives out there, things like the Montec King 95, another premium case for about $195, so I'll leave some additional options in the video description, and of course, check out our best PC cases video for even more options. But what about the power supply? Now you can check out our best PSU 2025 buying guide for even more details on how to size and buy the best PSU for your needs and budget. For a build like this, given the high-end GPUs that we're considering, I would recommend getting at least a B tier or better PSU, A tier is the other one, as rated on the SPL PSU tier list, and then size it at 1.5 times the max rated draw in PC part picker. If you're gonna drop in an RX 9070 XT, RTX 5070 Ti, or higher end GPU like the 5080 or 59, then definitely grab an A tier rated PSU. We end up using the Be Quiet 12M 850W PSU. It's a great unit with sleeved cables. It's PCIe 5.0 and ATX 3.1, so it's got the updated 12 volt high power connection for NVIDIA GPUs. We also use a set of Asia Horse white PSU cable extensions to keep that black and white contrast theme in our build. So how much is your build gonna cost? Well, I've put together two build templates to get you started. Now, the first is a mid-range value-focused build that uses the Ryzen 9800X 3D at its $450 current price with a mid-range air cooler, a mid-range ATX size motherboard, DDR5 6000CL30 non-RGB RAM, a two terabyte DRAM less NVMe SSD, a Montec XR Atrium style PC case, and an A tier rated 850 watt PSU on the SPL PSU tier list. Without the GPU included, the build costs right around $1,100 US. Now for a more premium build like this one here, we went with the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 ARGB 360 Pro AIO, upgraded the motherboard to a more premium B850 model, that's the ASUS Tough one, for $220, we went with RGB on the RAM at DDR5 6000CL30. We upgraded the NVMe SSD to one with DRAM at Gen 4 speeds. We went with the Antec C5 premium PC case and we upped the PSU to an A tier rated 1000 watt model for just over $1,300 before the cost of the GPU. Of course, you can spend more with additional M.2 storage, even more premium motherboards, PC cases, and higher wattage PSUs, but those templates should get you started, and I will leave both of them linked in the video description for you to check out, along with some alternative parts. So what is your Ryzen 9800X 3D gaming PC gonna be? Let me know down in the comments, and remember to check out everything linked in the video description for current pricing and availability in your region, and of course, all of our guides, like our how to build a PC play playlist, including our guide on how to build a PC and set up your PC after you build. If you got value out of this video, please do give a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. And we'll catch you on the next one.